Okay, so uh, very good afternoon. Um, hope you had a nice lunch. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about Jigna. That is uh, a way to create rich HTML user interfaces for Python applications. So can I get a um, round of hands? How many people have done any sort of user interface development in Python? A lot, okay. So uh, I'll start with a little bit personal introduction. I am a developer at Nthought India Mumbai for the last two years. Uh, Nthought is uh, a company which has uh, a Python distribution called Nthought Canopy. And uh, um, so I, I've been working on Nthought Canopy and Nthought Training on Demand, which is the online training, uh, online Python training. Uh, I've been mostly working on the front end development for that. And uh, before this, um, I completed my master's and bachelor's in aerospace engineering from IIT Bombay. But uh, aerospace engineering to UI development, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> um, so for Jigna, uh, uh, the two team members are uh, Prabhu Ramachandran. He is also an author of Maya V, which is a 3D visualization library. And uh, he is a professor at IIT Bombay, was also one of my ex-project guides. Uh, and uh, Martin Chilvers, who is author of Envisage, a plugin-based framework. Uh, sorry. So what is Jigna? Uh, so basically, it is a bridge which lets you write user interfaces in HTML for your Python models. But uh, uh, why HTML? So if you look at the current state of UI development in Python, you basically have like Qt, uh, WX, Python, PyGTK, Tkinter, and uh, most of them look more or less like this, where you have widgets for your common tasks and buttons and uh, menus and everything, which is nice for you to get started. Uh, you can uh, have, uh, you can get uh, a reasonable user interface um, in fairly, in fairly easily. But uh, if you want to have rich user interactions, then um, you are kind of limited by the widget set that is provided by the toolkit. Uh, the uh, code is mainly procedural, so if you were to add a widget here, you'll write um, qwidget.add widget uh, at this position, which is not really helpful in, because when you're trying to design something, you want to see it, uh, how it will look. So um, declarative code is usually better for UI. And again, uh, for toolkit specific uh, development, the community of designers is limited. Uh, the, I'm comparing this with uh, the web developers. So if you consider the web applications, uh, see the kind of richness you have in web applications. You'll have videos here, uh, hexagonal um, elements there, canvas, SVGs and all the cool things that uh, everyone is working on. So um, all in all, you have a very rich user interaction. And HTML is uh, not limited by a widget set. So it gives, uh, it uses the power of CSS and JavaScript so that uh, the designer can, uh, can design uh, the widgets just how they want it, not uh, like standard buttons or everything. So, each website can have its unique uh, feel to it. And the most important thing is that it's much, much easier to find HTML designers. If you want to go to a room and shout how many HTML developers there, you have a lot of hands up, but ask how many Qt developers, good luck. And again, the code is declarative, so very easy for non-programmers, I mean, who are designers to uh, get started on HTML. So, uh, so you have a very nice bridge uh, of HTML uh, technologies, but they are mainly limited to the web technologies. And uh, the desktop, uh, using desktop applications lag behind. Uh, you don't have the kind of richness for the desktop apps. What if we could bridge that gap? Uh, which is where Jigna comes in. Uh, so uh, let's say you have this domain model, uh, simple class employee with a name and salary. And this is, by the way, uh, nthought traits. Uh, so it has some nice features like um, uh, automatic notification uh, when the 
um, attribute changes and uh, static declaration of the types and all that. But um, so you can check out Anthod traits, but this talk is not about traits. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is uh, you have this domain model, and uh, what if you could have this sort of HTML uh, interface to it, where let's say you have uh, employee.name within the braces. This is a template, but uh, this is not a static template. So um, let's say it is bound to the name attribute of employee. So whenever employee.name changes, uh, the value gets updated. And you can call methods here. Uh, you can call the Python methods directly uh, from the HTML. So I'll start with a small demo here. And so you see you have employee name is Tom, uh, which is the name of the instance here and salary is 2000 you click on update salary uh, it will call the method uh, on the python side update the attribute and since the template is bound to the employee.salary attribute it will automatically get updated so uh, the thing to notice here is the model view binding is automatic you don't have to write any special code for binding the uh, particular template to uh, the model attribute. Uh, the HTML template is live, which means uh, and the, uh, whenever the model changes, the HTML changes, and uh, the HTML can call methods in the model. Uh, code is declarative, of course, because it's all HTML. And let's face it, uh, developers write the worst user interfaces. So uh, this, since it's all in HTML, this all can be handed off to an HTML designer, um, which is cool because there is nice model view separation. And it's not just for traits. So um, if you have a regular Python model, it will work just uh, as good for them, just that uh, the automatic uh, model change attribute, you have to bind it uh, to uh, to update the HTML. So we have an example for that. And before going further, what it is not, it is not another UI toolkit. The UI toolkit is HTML, so um, you don't have to learn new ways of creating widgets or anything. It's not a widget library. Uh, and it's not a web framework like Django and Flask, uh, mainly because of two reasons. One, uh, that Django and Flask give you uh, a static template, where here the template is dynamic, is always live. Other uh, is we are not doing web. So a lot of things that Django Flask handle, like security, cross-site prediction, and cookies, and all that, we don't handle all that. This is purely desktop uh, UI stuff. So how does it work? Um, you have the Python domain model on the left and the HTML live template. You write a little bit of uh, binding code, which uh, um, kind of creates an app with this template. And this template uh, will be rendered with this context. So the string employee is bound to the uh, Python object employee here. So um, now, whenever this employee um, dot name changes, this template automatically updates. And under the covers, we have a, a JavaScript proxy for the Python model. So basically, if you have an employee object there, you'll have a similar object in JavaScript. Uh, so between JavaScript and HTML, there is AngularJS MVC framework. AngularJS is basically, uh, it makes sure that whenever the object, uh, the JavaScript object changes, it updates the HTML. And uh, uh, for uh, connection between JavaScript to Python, we use Qt's QWebView. QWebView is basically just a browser which allows you to, uh, which allows the Python model, Python uh, to execute some JavaScript and uh, for JavaScript to uh, call methods in the Python or access attributes in the Python. So we are using just that small bridge protocol. Uh, so let's say um, you want to populate what employee.name is. So AngularJS will ask the JavaScript what is employee.name. And employee.name is a getter uh, function, which will in turn ask from the Python domain model what is employee.name. And the Python model will basically tell this is employee.name. And accordingly, the HTML template will be updated. And let's say um, the model changes uh, on the Python side. 
so traits has this mechanism of uh, how to handle change handlers. So whenever, let's say, salary changes, traits uh, fires an event on trait change. And uh, this will signal the model update to JavaScript. And uh, accordingly, we'll have uh, the Angular update the template. So um, you have a nice uh, live HTML template, which talks directly to the Python model. So I have a small demo here. Uh, uh, I'll cover uh, some of these things in the demo. Um, for uh, real applications, you need to bind, you need to have proxies for lists, uh, instances of objects. Uh, you need to call methods on the Python model. You need to call methods that are slow, so um, you can't afford to uh, have the UI blocked while the method is executing. And um, you want to attach some success callback, error callback, event handling. So. Let's start this application here. Is it too small? I'll, okay, so nothing much to read here. Basically, there are two apps, and um, I'll read out the code in here. So we have a simple app object with name, URL icon, and things like that, and. Uh, an app manager, which has a start app. So, um, so in order to show these two apps, uh, there is uh, this is an Angular JS construct, ng repeat, which is like a for loop for Angular JS. It uh, um, loops through the app manager dot installed apps. Now, app manager dot installed apps is uh, uh, an attribute of the app of the Python object, which is a list. So each app is uh, a proxy to the Python uh, app object. And um, for this, you can write um, ng src, which is the source of the image tag, is app.icon URL, which will fetch the icon URL for this app, and the app.name. Um, and um, you can define the click behavior on uh, the button click, which will call the start app method of the app. Um, so basically, uh, a simple dynamic template which talks directly to the Python object. So if I click here, uh, it will start the app. It says "Hello Berlin," and uh, so. And if you, uh, you can also install some apps. So um, you go to the store. Now here, when I click on "Go to Store." You saw a little uh, loader, right? So um, when you click uh, uh, go to store, it calls a method uh, connect here, which has some slow. I have uh, mocked it here, but basically you would be contacting some web services. But uh, you cannot afford to block the user interface. So uh, we provide a way to uh, to call this method asynchronously so that you can have the um, the UI loader. And then the apps in the interface in the store appear. You can click install, which will show you a nice progress dialog. Now this progress dialog is also um, so when you click install, this is also an asynchronous call. You'll have a fetch action, uh, which will uh, update the progress. And progress is uh, uh, progress is uh, an integer. So in order to show that nice little progress bar, uh, the code is like this. So you have uh, a div and uh, a style which says width is bound to the progress percentage of the uh, model. So um, whatever the progress is, uh, the width of that uh, block, the green part there, will be updated accordingly. So uh, and this app is installed. You can remove it. If you want to uh, feel adventurous, there is, uh, you can go to the, sorry. You can go to the console here uh, and uh, see that uh, the app manager uh, object is available as jigna.models.appmanager. Uh, so Jigna.models is where we save all the Python model uh, proxies. And 
this object is just a regular proxy for this uh, Python object. Uh, so you have um, attributes like available apps, install apps, connected, all that. And uh, um, all of these attributes are defined lazily. So um, you, if you have a deep nested object, we don't serialize it uh, all at once. So you will only serialize what is uh, needed on the HTML. So um, you can uh, say um, app zero equal to jigna dot uh, um, installed, uh, sorry, uh, app manager dot uh, installed told apps zero which will give you the first app and then you can simply say from the terminal here uh, app manager dot start app app sorry yeah so uh, it's like a, a little toy uh, JavaScript REPL for Python objects, which is cool. Uh, and you can attach uh, success, uh, error callbacks, success callbacks. So um, you saw the slow method call. Uh, if you want to call it, you will write uh, jigna.threaded which will call this slow method in a thread so that your UI does not block. Um, okay. And uh, you have, um, sorry. Um, and so you can attach success error callbacks and also do some event handling. You can check out the repo for that. Um, of course, you can. Uh, I know it's hard to port everything uh, instantly, so uh, there has to be good interfacing with existing Qt widgets. So um, I have a demo here which shows how to embed uh, Qt widgets with Jigna. So um, let's say you have an existing Qt widget. In this case, I have a Maya V plot here, which is a Qt widget, and you can embed it within Jigna um, by saying. Object widget factory equal to scene dot create scene widget. So it takes a factory which will um, which will generate the queue widget and it will embed it inside the object tag. So um, and um, so basically since everything is bound, uh, n meridional is an attribute in the model. You change it, the widget automatically updates and everything is live. And you can also embed Jigna widgets within Qt, which is the reverse. Uh, so Jigna widgets are just like regular Qt widgets. So um, they will behave, they will give you a regular Qt widget API. So this is a Qt, a dev, an app developed in pure Qt. And if you click on this button, it will embed that uh, Jigna HTML view here, and everything will work as before. Browser version. Um, so what do you think this presentation is running on? The same thing, Jigna. So uh, when I click on example, I have an example server running, which takes a pool of examples from the repo. And uh, the examples viewer here is uh, basically, it just runs that example from uh, the repository. Uh, so you can directly call this method. So. Um, I can show you uh, the App Store demo in the browser version, but in the lack of time, I'll rather skip to the next demo, which I think is cooler, as live IPython notebook widgets. So since you can do it on the web as well, but we don't uh, advertise it as a web uh, UI development because uh, um, mainly you, you will not solve all the problems that the web world has because it's all local. So. Um, 
But um, you can have cool things like IPython notebook widgets. So if you have seen IPython notebook uh, display HTML or display JavaScript functions, this is similar. Uh, so what you can do is you can have uh, nice interactive widgets, uh, HTML widgets, which are live. So here I have a person object. Uh, and I display, I call display jigna with this context in this template. Now, um, this um, shows me this UI. This could be any fancy UI. And if I say name is Freddy, and I want to print the name Freddy here. So this name automatically updates since the UI was updated. So um, the user, you can have richer stories about your data since you can express everything graphically. Let's say you change it to um, foo it automatically updates the value here. Uh, I have another example, which is um, matplotlib uh, plot example. So you have a plot and you have a model attribute called scaling factor. And you change the scaling factor, the plot automatically updates. So um, and the scaling factor uh, is updated according to the new values. And let's say you later in your IPython notebook, you say scaling factor equal to uh, 15. It will update the graph and the entire view, everything. So you'll have richer uh, IPython notebooks using this. Uh, one last example is Mayavi on the web. Um, this is an experimental one. So you'll see a little warning here. Uh, but. Uh, So basically, you have a nice H, uh, WebGL, uh, WebGL rendering of uh, a Maya V object. Um, and you have uh, a model attribute called n contour. And uh, if you change the um, value of the contour, um, the, um, the figure updates. And um, later in the IPython notebook, if you say equal to 3, it updates the Sorry. Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so plotter dot plotter dot and contour three, which will update the figure here. So you can have uh, rich stories, rich uh, uh, IPython notebooks. This. And that's all for today. The code is on GitHub. Everything is open source. There are a lot of examples you can try. And so, thank you. Thanks a lot for your talk. Unfortunately, we are very late, no and there won't be any time for questions and answers. But I'd suggest if you have any questions, you can come to him later. Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.